Hi everyone. Oh, grab my clicker. Um, hi guys, my name's Leomi Anderson, and today I want to make you rethink your perceptions of what it's like to be a young model in the industry. Because I feel like not a lot of people know the behind the scenes of what goes on and like all the work that young girls have to put in. So I was scouted when I was 14 years old. Um, that's kind of a vibe of what I look like. I look a mess. I had red hair and blue mascara when this Canadian guy came up to me after school and was like, hey, have you ever considered doing modeling? Uh, I'm not being funny, you think, but I just thought stranger danger. So I ran away onto any random bus. Like so many girls are like, oh, I just went with this guy to the agency or whatever. No, no, no. My mom was like, you know, she taught me very well. Um, but then the next day he came back. So obviously, again, I definitely thought, hi, stranger danger at this point. And he was like, no, don't run away. Here's my business card. Give it to your mom. Like, please come in. Uh, but I thought, nah. I didn't think that modeling was something that I could actually do. I thought it was kind of like if you see a tall boy, tell him to do basketball. I didn't think it was something that I could seriously make into a career. And at the end of the day, I was only 14 years old. Um, a few months later, somebody else from the same agency came up to me and I thought to myself, you know what, this is a sign, maybe I should actually go in. And I did, and that was a day that completely changed my life. I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I looked a mess. I had red hair, okay? I had a fake Gucci belt. I had patent tights on. And, and, you know, if any of you guys shopped in Primark when you were younger, you know that was the Primark vest, the staple of my wardrobe. And the quiff um, when I went in. I was so nervous and stiff. And I had all these people coming up to me, shaking my hand, saying how excited they were that I finally came in and that they wanted to sign me straight away. But the thing that really really stuck with me that day was when they left my mom and I alone to speak and she turned to me and she was like, Leomi, these people are not your friends. <laughs> and that's no offense to them, but my mom was always a constant in my life reminding me that this was not going to be the easy way out. This was not going to be the fairy tale industry that I was stepping into and it wasn't going to be like an easy ride. And um, my mom, so she's just hitting right here. So thank you for that because it, it really, really helped me throughout. Oh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, being so young and stepping into that, I'm so glad that I had her with me throughout this. Um, the only thing that I knew about, oh, sleep, okay. Boom, 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 you see the quiff. But okay, the only thing that I knew about modeling before I got signed is what I saw in America's Next Top Model and what I saw in magazines. So no wonder I thought I was going to be staying in this million pound mansion with 11 cool housemates and one challenge a day to complete. Mm. <laughs> You can imagine my shock when I flew to New York for the very first time when I was 17 years old and I pulled up to this old school red brick house in Manhattan to find a broke down model apartment with 12 girls, six bunk beds, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, mice and roaches. And that's no exaggeration, okay? And we were paying over a thousand pounds to stay there, by the way, um, for the month. And um, I was like, what is this? Like, what is kind of going on? <laughs> This is my mood right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, shout out to Ship Model Management for the uh, memes that you're going to see throughout my slideshow. Um, it was my first time traveling alone, and for some of the girls that were staying in the house, it was actually their first time even leaving their home state or leaving their small town, whether they were from, you know, somewhere in Eastern Europe or wherever. For most of us, it was the first time being without our parents. And instead of having one challenge a day like America's Next Top Model, we had up to 20 castings a day, and no, we weren't being driven around in some SUV like I thought, no. We had to use the subway, we had to learn how to navigate the streets of New York very quickly, and it was a very big learning experience for me. Now, the only day that I do remember resembling America's Next Top Model was the day when I had to go into my agency with my suitcase so they could see what outfits we would create for certain big castings. We went into a room, we laid out all of our clothes, and our book would be like, so, what would you wear for Calvin Klein? What would you wear for Michael Kors? But obviously, I'm only 17, I was basic as hell. I had some vintage Levi shorts and I would just change the vest. Black Primark vest, white Primark vest. I just kept it simple, but you know what? I passed the test. However, there was this one Russian girl who lived in my apartment. She was like 19 at the time. She's very sure of herself. And the book would be like, okay, so what are you gonna wear to Alexander Wang? My girl would be like, I'll wear my white club jean, my patent white shoe, and my studded denim jacket. These are my favorite. 
Oh, mm, yeah. These are my favorite fashions. That's what she was about. My booker. <laughs> this was my booker's face, okay? Understand and know. He was literally like having a heart attack. <laughs> Seriously, okay? <laughs> and he canceled all of our classes for that day and he took us on a shopping trip, okay? And now, he didn't take us broke ass new face models to Zara or H&M. They took us to Saks Fifth Avenue and Bird of Goodman, like design, designer stuff. He had these girls twirling around like Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City to the point where they forgot they were actually on That So Raven Budgets. Mm -hmm. Every model is actually technically already in debt from when they very first start with the model apartment rent, um, you know, website fees, your first shoots, and your flights. We were all actually in minus, and all these things were going to be taken away from the money that we first earned from our shows, but these girls don't think that. But I had my mum's voice ringing in my ears, these people are not your friends, friends, friends. <laughs> so every time they would be offering me $300 vests, $600 shorts, I was like, nah, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> this is me. I was like, nah, I'm okay, thank you. Because I just knew, even though they hadn't told us specifically that these things weren't free, I knew that this wasn't coming from nowhere. I know it sounds crazy, obviously, thinking like, why did they spend so much money on our clothes and whatnot, but Fashion Week is so competitive and there's so many girls there. And you know, you go to a cast and there can be up to 300 girls sitting with you. And our agency just wants to do everything to make us stand out. Before you even get on the runway, we're running around the streets of New York, we're sweating our asses off, we're, we're getting lost. And by the way, these are the times I didn't even have internet on my phone, so we had to like map everything the night before, and our bookers would call us in the middle of the day and say, you have to go here. What am I doing, please? I haven't even got a map. I have to like, you have to navigate, you have to really adapt at such a young age. And especially for girls who aren't used to big cities as well, like we're from London, so New York is kind of, it's not the same, but we kind of knew how to work the city. There was girls who didn't even speak English and they had to do all of this. It's, it's not an easy job at all. Now, speaking about debts and money, one of the biggest misconceptions about the modeling industry is that every model is super rich and living the high life. My uncle stays bantering me, asking me when he's gonna get his 10%, and I'm like, mate, when I get it, I'll let you know, <laughs> okay? Because after you get paid, your agency takes 20%, taxes take up to 40%, and then those Gucci heels that your booker made you buy in whenever, that gets deducted too. Like, people don't realize that it's very hard for young models to actually see any of their earnings when they very first start modeling. And I still have jobs from even 2016 and 15 that still haven't paid me to this day. Like modeling is not like as easy as people think. And then there's the fact that if you're a model who has an unconventional look, yes, you might be in all of the magazines, but that doesn't mean that you actually have any money because magazines don't pay. Thanks, recession. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like that's one thing that a lot of, not a lot of people know. Yeah, you might see like Jordan, and all these big models and think that every model who's then shooting the same editorials as them is living the same life, but it doesn't work that way. I know I'm making it sound like kind of a, a crazy industry for such a young person to be in, but of course, I have to be honest in order to make you think again. See how I slid that in there? Um, but I've obviously had many amazing experiences. That show season, no matter how tired I was, no matter how crazy it was for me and you know how stressful it was for us living in that house together, it was worth it. Like in the end, I got one show, one show, and I couldn't even walk, by the way, but it happened to be marked by Mark Jacobs, and because of that, it set off the rest of my career. But at the time, when I went there, I didn't know what I was gonna get. I didn't know whether I was gonna do well. I could have gotten nothing, and I want people to understand that there's always, with modeling, there's always that risk. You never know when you go abroad, spending all this money, getting into debt, living in these houses with all these roaches and the mice. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. There's always that element of risk. But it was worth it, and I've been able to travel from a young age. I've been able to work with amazing photographers. I've been able to learn so much about myself that I wouldn't have been able to do if I didn't take that risk, if I didn't get on that plane, if my mum didn't allow me just to go and be free and do what I want to do. And I wanted to kind of, well, I guess this is the inspirational bit, but I wanted everyone to think about, like, when you see someone in a position that you want to be in in life, you don't actually know the backstory behind it. With modeling, yes, you see the glossy images, you see the runway pictures, you see the magazines, but people don't realize that for some of those girls, that's them providing for their whole families back home. That's them 
change in their entire life. That's them stepping out for the first time on the runway, scared as hell, and not even being able to walk, <laughs> and having to go back home to Roaches as well, which I did after Mark by Mark Jacobs. Um, I think it's one of those industries that because it's so, it's so superficial, it's so shiny, it's so glossy, people don't think about the hardships that come along with it, and that's just like with any job. So with any path that we all decide to take, there are going to be risks, there are going to be challenges, and there are going to be hard times. But it's up to us to decide how we're going to allow those situations to define us. It's up to us to decide whether we want to persevere. It's up to us to decide whether we're going to change those roaches into riches. Ooh, I just thought of that. Yes. <laughs> and really just make something of ourselves. Like we're all here, we're all from London, we all wanna be something of ourselves, but are you gonna take that step? Are you gonna do that hard work? It's up to us to decide for our futures what we wanna be. So yeah, thank you guys for listening to my talk and that is my behind the lens of the modeling industry. Thank you.